Welcome to this latest edition of Silicon Grapevine. And today my guest is Rahul Patel, who's the president and CEO of Synaptics. Rahul, hello, how are you? Good morning, Nathan. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, Welcome Synaptics. to Synaptics. Yes, so Synaptics HQ in uh, California. Um, t- uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you're currently doing, and then we'll probe into some of your, your journey. Yeah, as you said, I'm the president and CEO of Synaptics. Very excited to be here. Um, we are on a path to focus the company on edge AI solutions on a mm. going forward basis. And mm. like you indicated, it's a journey on a going forward basis. There's a lot to do, uh, a lot of uh, good capability in the company, both technically from an intellectual property point of view, as well as uh, into uh, the R&D caliber in the company, mm. in our mm. employee base. And so there is uh, a general excitement about uh, where we are headed. And I'm really fortunate to quote unquote, captain this ship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've, you've had quite a, a good career um, with uh, some of the big companies in, in, in our industry, you know, uh, Broadcom, Qualcomm, uh, but uh, uh, you know, what do you feel you're bringing to Synaptics here uh, that uh, comes from that? Yes, uh, I, I, I do agree. I had the opportunity to work for big companies. However, in both the big companies, there were uh, groups that were a lot smaller when I started out uh, and then ended up being uh, you know, very large businesses for those companies in the process. It uh, was a journey. Yeah. in those companies, both at Broadcom and Qualcomm. Uh, and uh, that experience where you are a much smaller team organization, uh, however, there is clear opportunity ahead of you to kind of execute to is what uh, I see at Synaptics. And that's the experience I plan to bring into Synaptics. Okay. Well, uh, the idea of the show is to just to go probe into a little bit about uh, you and the personality. Um, but first of all, how did you get into electronics? I think you wanted to really play cricket and not uh, not really yeah. electronics. Even if today if I had a choice. <laughs> but uh, long story short, you are absolutely right. Uh, growing up, I absolutely wanted to play cricket all my life. Yeah, because uh, let's, you, you grew up in India, so in, in India, the, the national uh, passion is cricket, just like yeah, yeah. Uh, in other countries, like in Brazil, it's football. So- yes, yes. I think uh, India has two... Uh, and national passions. One is cricket, another is Bollywood, as you know, yes. right? Yes. Long story short, yeah. uh, obviously, I didn't have the chops to be in Bollywood, so the best thing I could do is be in cricket because yeah. uh, I could play cricket. And so, growing up, uh, absolutely a huge, uh, uh, you know, amount of time I spent on cricket, uh, even today. Were you on uh, the team? Uh, yes, I played uh, for my town. Mm. Uh, Which I, town was that? Uh, it, it was Baroda, oh, Baroda. now known as uh, Vadodara. Yeah, yes. But long story short, uh, growing up uh, was uh, uh, a lot more uh, wanting to kind of uh, be a cricketer yeah. before anything else. However, uh, very quickly in my 10th grade, I realized uh, there's only so far I could go with the probability of success ahead of me in cricket and uh, my caliber. And so that's when I pivoted. And was it parental pressure to do a degree as well? <laughs> I, uh, fortunately for me, there was very little parental pressure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, however, I think uh, there was uh, in my mindset that uh, you know, bringing uh, and making ends meet was also equally important. Yeah. And uh, as you probably may have heard, cricket is a very competitive sport yes. uh, in India. And I think, uh, long story short, you know, uh, I had to pivot yes. at some point and, and pivot it in the direction of science at that point. Excellent. Uh, so then, like, did you pick electronics because you were good at it or, or because you just thought, OK, well, this is one thing I'd be interested in? This is a very loaded question. <laughs> OK, I pick electronics because I realized I was not good at medicine. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I come from a family where medicine is uh, the profession, basically. My father was a surgeon. My mom uh, is, uh, was an RN. And I have a sister who is also today an anesthesiologist. And, so, and my brother-in-law is a urologist. And so you can see, clearly, <laughs> I'm very different. But, you know, I, I really, if I had a choice and I would have applied myself, I would be a doctor. But long story short, because I couldn't stand uh, biology, yeah. right? Yeah. Then I, you know, and I was uh, reasonably better than biology when doing physics and chemistry and math, and so I ended up in engineering. 
you know, you, you say something which is right to my heart because I, I wanted to do medicine and two years reading applied, but I didn't get the grades. But then I realized afterwards, like I'm squeamish when I was doing dissection in biology. And I thought, okay, no way. <laughs> We're very similar. I think, I, by the way, I did have the grades to go into medicine, but long story short, uh, it's just I could not stand uh, yeah. exactly what you were experiencing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, you did that, uh, um, and then what happened? You, you graduated? Uh... Yeah, so I, you know, I did my undergrad in electronics and communications engineering uh, in India, and I came to U.S., got my master's in computer science and engineering, and uh, I had my eyes set on Silicon Valley. Uh, this was in uh, 1993. Um, and I came into Silicon Valley and um, haven't uh, been anywhere else since. Uh, and I've lived more of my, of my life yeah. in Silicon Valley than I've uh, anywhere else in the world. And so, uh, so, so that uh, when, you, when you came to study, you studied not in Silicon Valley, but or was it in Silicon Valley? No, I, I was in Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. So I studied at Arizona State. Yeah. Uh, and um, then I obviously had my eyes, like I said, set on Silicon Valley and landed out. Uh, with a job over here as a uh, ASIC design engineer writing algorithms for CAD tools. Long story short, uh, at some point uh, decided I wanted to be on the business side. If you kind of double click on my heritage and where I come from, business uh, generally runs in the blood. Yeah. And so I said, uh, you know, I felt like uh, engineering wasn't appreciated as well as it should be yeah. or engineering capabilities in, um, in tech at that point and I wanted to try my hand at this, went to business school uh, while I was uh, yeah. uh, an engineer in my first job, completed business school, transitioned to uh, marketing and then uh, over the years uh, grew into being a general manager at Broadcom and Qualcomm. Right, and so, so you, you st I mean, how did you get into Broadcom? I think uh, that was because uh, first of all, yeah, it's quite interesting like your journey between jobs as well, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, so I was working for a startup at that point, a smaller, much smaller company that did security processors. Yeah. And, uh, Which is a big thing today. Yeah, it is a big thing today. And uh, it was early days for Broadcom to get into security yeah. uh, processors for networking uh, uh, reasons. And uh, that's where I got recruited yeah. into Broadcom. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another and uh, the world of Wi-Fi became uh, center stage for Broadcom and I was part of that uh, journey at Broadcom where uh, the team delivered phenomenal results uh, over a period of a decade and a half yeah. and uh, was uh, the growth engine and the profit engine for the company for a very long time. Yes. And so, you know, I flourished yeah. in my career as a result of being part of that organization and the team and um, there was no looking back from there. Okay, and, and then so what sort of made you decide, okay, you've had enough and you know, sort of next, the next transition, uh, what, what was the trigger? Well, I think, um, you know, at some point, I think uh, Broadcom was uh, experiencing a fork in the road uh, with the acquisition of Broadcom by Avago. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, at that point, uh, it was uh, the right opportunity that came along with Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm had then acquired a company called Atheros Communications. Yes. And Qualcomm had... Just down the road here. Yes. <laughs> and Qualcomm had plans to kind of grow, you know, in the unlicensed spectrum, uh, you know, much more uh, than where they were. And so that uh, was a great opportunity for me. And uh, then CEO and president uh, and the CEO now, that is Chris Chano, um, recruited me. And I think uh, it was, uh, you know, another good decade of uh, growth and uh, success for the entire organization that I was part of. What do you think, um, I mean, in this career, um, what do you think are the things, key things you've learned, um, which uh, you know, maybe came from either people you worked with as mentors or, or just generally or both, you know, yeah, I think uh, there's definitely, you know, a uh, few things, but if I have to kind of pick uh, the top two or three, I think it's very clear that, uh, you know, you are as good as your team. Yes. And uh, there is uh, no two ways about it in my mind. Uh, no one person is bigger than the team and, you know, the team is the recipe for success. Uh, so number one is that. Number two is, Along the way, I've learned, and I still learn, that uh, listening is the best learning. All I know about tech today, from where I am, 
is all because of what I have heard from others and not anything that I picked up in my books or yeah. textbooks or college. And so, you can uh, do my job then. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so one day, you know. Uh, but long story short, um, it is definitely a key element. I think uh, you can learn from any and every aspect uh, of the organization. Even, uh, you know, catching up with uh, fresh grads yes. who have just joined the organization to obviously senior colleagues. Uh, there's a lot to pick up uh, from listening. And I think listening is the best learning, in my opinion. And the youngsters today, I mean, they're so smart. Uh, you know, so you can learn, like, it's, it's a two-way street as well. I think you can learn from them and they learn from you. But uh, I remember doing a startup in 2017, which uh, was uh, for the investment community for the tech sector. And I had a team of 20-somethings, and it was me. And, like, I learned about Slack. I learned about this. You know, like, things that you wouldn't have done otherwise. So. Yes, it's a, it, and I think that's your philosophy, isn't it? Yes, I, I really believe in that. And I think the third thing I would go back to the top three things. Yeah. Uh, I probably, you know, latched on to what Andy Grove at Intel uh, yeah. said uh, and was very well publicized in his book and everywhere, everywhere else yeah. that only the paranoid survive, right? And I think those are the three big things uh, that are amongst many others that, uh, you know, I kind of latch on to from time to time. There's other thinking in that. I mean, it's not it, it, the only paranoid survive. And I think yeah, it's you're always thinking you're you're not indispensable, and you're you're always looking around to make sure you're doing what you need to do. Yeah, of course. I think uh, you know, and you know, paranoia should come from multiple areas. Yeah. One is, are you constantly learning, right? And I think you should be paranoid about that. Are you constantly aware of what? you are perceived by your teammates because yeah. I think like I said earlier you're as good as your team and so I think that is another big thing you should be constantly paranoid about what your competitors are going to do in the marketplace yeah. you should be constantly paranoid about what your customers are thinking about you and your products and your company right and so paranoia uh, and survival I think uh, go hand in hand in my opinion yeah um any sort of people that you think were really good in terms of guiding you and mentoring you? Yeah, I think uh, there's not one person. Yeah. Uh, there's many along That's the way. And I think, uh, you know, like I am, nobody's perfect. Mm. And, uh, you know, obviously there's always opportunities to pick up good things from people. And so I picked up uh, quite a bit along the way from many people. And so there's not one person I would say is, uh, uh, you know, a clear mentor, but there are many along the way. However, there is one set of individuals that I always rely on, which uh, is the basis for my values, and that's my parents. Perfect, uh, yeah, I think uh, they're not mentioned so, as much as they should be, I think sometimes, so yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, in terms of like, uh, you know, just change a little bit in terms of your hobbies, obviously we know about cricket. What else, uh, what else do you get to, I mean, do you get time? Because yeah. early you're always working. Yeah, I think it's a great question, and it, it is uh, a fair assessment. I think uh, time is not easily available. Uh, however, I do find time to hike quite a bit. Uh, I do find time to listen to music. I am, uh, as like with many Indians uh, growing up in India, a big fan of uh, Indian music, including Bollywood and as well as the classical music. And so. I do find time uh, doing some of those things as well as uh, when opportunity arises, which is effectively when friends show up at home, I like to cook for them. Okay. And I think uh, you also have a passion for tea. Well, yes. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Indian tea, yeah. the chai, right? Yeah. And the spicier it is, uh, yeah. the better it is for me. Okay. Well, uh, I remember once we had a guest, guest uh, English guest at our house, and um, we made masala chai. and like uh, one of them, like uh, take took a sip and went yeah, like like this, and then um, so my wife asked, "Is it okay?" I said, mm, mm. <laughs> ah, "It's definitely an acquired taste. Yeah, exactly. uh, it's the formula to uh, wake up, basically." Yeah. Um, what do you, what do you think about the industry and uh, how uh, it's evolved over over the years? It's been uh, like very accelerated in the last two to five years, hasn't it, in terms of our semiconductor industry? Yes, I think uh, the world of AI has definitely uh, taken center stage, uh, not only in the tech industry, but also 
the industries around the world, yeah, right? It's, it's so, impacted everything else. Correct, yeah. exactly. And so I think uh, within the world of AI, uh, I think there is uh, an evolution in itself. We are going from data centers mm. to now to the edge. And I think uh, the opportunity to be at the edge is now and the growth is ahead of us for the edge marketplaces for AI solutions. And so really excited about uh, how AI is evolving and very excited about where Synaptics and the opportunity for Synaptics is right now. Uh, exciting times for, for, the, for the industry and for Synaptics, I guess. Um, last question, you know, what would you advise young Rahul, you know, knowing what you know now through your career? Yeah, be passionate and chase your dreams. Don't compromise. So if you want to be a cricketer, be a cricketer. Right? I think that's what I would say. All right. Well, Raul Patel, thank you very much. Thank you, Neil. Thank you.